Guys, welcome back to the vlog. I'm Matt Wilson, this is CRD. And if it's your first time here, well, I'll let you know now. We end up talking a lot about denim on this channel. So I started up this channel again after after a couple of years actually, a couple of years break. And I think it started at maybe eight or nine months ago. And it was a chance for me to, to reconnect with, uh, with the denim industry again, or, or to certainly reconnect with the, with the consumer part of the, of the denim industry again, because that's, that's where my background is. I started with denim hunters, I went on to rope dye, and, and rope dye evolved into CRD. And that's what we're talking about now. And that, that short time, I mean, eight, nine months is really not a long time, although a lot's happened in that time. But the conversations I've had, the connections I've made and the people I've spoken to over that time has really shifted my perceptions a great deal on, on what I consider to be sustainability within denim, um, quality within denim, and, and just pure practicality within denim. I mean, this all started off, I think, when I... When I was having a catch up with, with a friend of mine, Annie Wells, she, she runs Simply Suzette. And from that, from her perspective, she, she's very dedicated to the sustainability aspects of, of denim on, in the denim industry. From that conversation, my perceptions of what I considered a sustainable pair of jeans, an uh, ecologically ethical pair of jeans, that really started to shift. And from that conversation, I had conversations with with Ada, um, she is from Surti. That led me on to a conversation that I had with, um, with Mosin from Endrime. And then that also led me on to having a couple of videos up in Blue Lens. And then finally, what we're gonna to see today, which is a longer, it's a longer conversation with Trisha from Lensing. Now, Lensing, Lensing is, a, is a fiber manufacturer. That means that they, they, they take well, I'm going, to, I'm going to let Trish actually take you through the entire thing. But long and short of it, made as short as possible, is they take wood pulp, turn into fibres, that fibre is blended with denim, and that really that enhances the, the sustainability of denim in the long run. And so my idea before, my, my, my perception of sustainable denim would be like, yeah, nothing gets more sustainable than a raw pair of jeans. Turns out it's not really that way. It's not as simple. It's not as clean cut as that. And the conversations I've had since then has really educated me and challenged a little bit of my perceptions. Because especially with us raw denim guys, there's like, yup, unless it's 100% cotton, unless it's raw, it's, it's bad quality, um, it's, it's definitely not going to be ethical, it's definitely not going to be sustainable. I don't think that's the case anymore. And, well... Okay, I'm just, uh, I'm talking a little bit too much now as I don't normally do. I think I'm just going to dive straight into, into the, the conversation I had with Trisha and you guys can make up your mind for yourself from there. Can we just start off with, um, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Sure. Thanks, Matt, for, for having me today. Um, always great to chat. My name is Trisha Carey and I handle global business development for Denim at Lensing. And here in my role, I work with mill partners as well as with retailers and brands and communicate all the way to the consumer about how we transform trees into fiber. And uh, Lensing is a fiber producer based in Austria. We have seven manufacturing facilities around the world. And we make Tencel, Lyocell, Modal, and also Ecovero Viscose. Okay, so, um, so that's, what, that's what Lensing is as a whole. And yes. so you're turning, you're turning wood fibers into, or sorry, wood pulp into fibers, is that right? Correct, yeah. So what we do is we take the wood, um, so we take the trees, and then we make pulp out of the trees. And mm. when we do that, we use every part of the tree. Um, so we even use some of that tree for renewable energy. We burn that, uh, you know, burning the bark in order to have energy for our production facility. So it's, it's done in a very uh, environmentally responsible way. And then from the pulp, what we do is we add a solvent, it's harder to see the pulp, but we add a solvent to the pulp. It becomes almost 
elastic consistency like a honey. Um, and then we extrude that through spinnerets. So if you think like a shower head, and then what we have at the end is, is this fiber. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, we make this as staples um, and it's commonly blended with other fibers, including cotton. And it makes your denim super soft, very comfortable, strong, and it's mindful of the environment because it's originating from a renewable resource. So you mentioned just in the, in the first point, did I understand there's like three different families that you can make out of this process? Um, tensiles being one of them, and what are the other two and what are their applications? Yes, that's great, Matt. Yeah, we call it three generations. I, I refer to it as kind of like your phone. You know, with each generation of your phone, the, it keeps getting better, right? You have a better resolution on your screen, a better camera. It's very similar for what we have. Um, and with each generation of fiber, the fiber gets stronger and it has less impact on the environment. So we started off the oldest fiber is viscous. We brand that as Lensing Ecovero. We have a tracer in that fiber so we can identify that it's from Lensing. And then the second generation is actually Tensile Model. We make that at our headquarters in Austria at our integrated plant. And then our third generation, the newest of, uh, of the family, is our Tensile Lyocell. And that came on the market in 1992. The first production was actually in Mobile, Alabama, here in the United States. And uh, with Tencel Lyocell, we even have a 2.0 version, which we call Refibra technology. And there, what we're doing is instead of using all wood to produce the fiber, we actually mix in post-consumer and post-industrial waste. So we can take cotton scraps, we can upcycle cotton in order to make the pulp and then we combine that with the wood pulp and we're able to process the fiber that way. So this innovation that continues to happen at Lensing and new technology and advances that we're able to incorporate into our pulp as well as our production in order to you know, be more mindful of the environment. Uh, okay, so you said something really interesting there. You, you include a tracer in, in, in the fibers so you can, yep. you can identify that this has been your fiber. And that must make this sort of circular idea of production much more, much easier to get an overview. Is that right? Um, well, the fiber ID is only that it verifies that it comes from lensing. And, and now there's other technology that's coming on for circularity because what needs to happen then is, um, you know, if you think about it, it's like a blockchain, you need to be able to identify where does yeah. it go for spinning? Where, how is it being dyed? you know, what is, how is it being woven and throughout each step in order to understand. But you're, you're exactly right. That's where the industry will be going. Um, in order to reprocess any kind of, you know, post-consumer spent textiles, used textiles, um, they need to know what has been done to that fabric. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of dyes and chemicals are being used in order to understand how to process it. And even fiber blends. I mean, this is a big challenge that the industry is facing is how do we deal with multi-fiber blend fabrics? So the fiber identification that we add into the fiber right now, that's providing the transparency that the origin is known because it's very important to work with suppliers that are being responsible in how they're managing their tree source. So for lensing, we have certified and controlled FSC and PEFC uh, wood products. Um, you know, being responsible around the renewable resource of the trees, making sure that any of the tree farms that we're buying trees or pulp from are, you know, doing it in a responsible way, which means not using any trees from rainforests ancient forests or endangered forests. And so that's where the fiber identification supports um, the responsible forestry, the uh, sustainable uh, production process that we have in Lensing as a producer based in Europe. You know, we, we have different standards um, that might not be followed around the world. And also what we use for the fiber identification is we can go through a fabric certification process, and this allows for any of the branding. So we have our Tencel brand, which is also um, you know, a hang tag program that we have. 
or brands can develop their own programs and we need to verify if our brand name is on it, what it stands for. And these are part of our brand values. So the fiber identification helps to understand that it still is our fiber through every step from spinning, weaving, um, knitting, or uh, garment making. But that's it's a really, really fascinating point. And like, it's going to be super interesting to watch that going into the future as we sort of move towards this more circular production. So like this, this far fabric type, uh, sorry, no, it's not fabric, but fiber tagging. That's going, yes. to be, that's, that's going to be a really interesting one to, to watch how that develops. Uh, it will be. And you see a lot happening in other fiber categories too, like in cotton, where now they're looking to trace back, you know, where is the cotton coming from? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the whole array of the, the concept around transparency and the storytelling that's happening is very important. So whether it's for circularity or just people now want to know where their product's coming from. They want to know the company, even down to the raw materials. And we are asked questions all the time of, you know, which forest is the tre- are the trees coming from? I mean, some of this is, it gets very challenging. You also have to think about the cost of doing all of this, the cost of transparency you know, adding the fiber identification, then providing the certificate, doing the testing. We have a platform, a digital platform that we have all the information on so that we can share it because, you know, we're making fiber in Austria or in the UK, US. It might be, um, you know, certified in Asia. You've got garment makers. It's coming back over here to the West. So all of this um, makes it very interesting to manage uh and also it's a part of having the brand and that's what we stand for and so as i understand it tensile is the most is the most commonly associated fiber that you're making most commonly associated with denim is that right yeah tensile lyocell so tensile is our brand name the tensile lyocell uh that's where it's very common in the denim industry We've been working in, with Tensile Lysel since 1992. Originally, it went into a lot of the Japanese denim programs in the early 1990s. Oh, yeah. um, there was actually the Japanese Kai that worked with the local uh, spinners, weavers. And that was a big area. I would say also in the mid-90s, very important, our friends in Spain, Tejitas Royo, Textile Santanderina. These mills were traditionally using tensile lyocell. And then also um, Burlington, which is a part, you know, Cone um, originally was a part of. These were some of the mills that were using tensile lyocell in the 1990s. I started with the company in 1998. So it's been very interesting over the past 22 years to see this evolution of the fiber coming into the market. And I would say then it was around... 2010 or so, it was when that cotton spike went up in 2011, the prices were very high, that we saw the denim industry was starting to question how, you know, what other materials that could be used and how could they incorporate tensile lyocell into their blends. And that's when we started to get phone calls of, well, you know, where are you producing the fiber and how much do you have? How much fiber do I add until I start to feel it? Because people still wanted this very authentic uh, touch and hand to the denim. And I would say, you know, this is where we saw more mills experimenting with multi-fiber blends because the rise of the skinny jean, the super soft second skin, you want something that's comfortable. And Tencel just enhanced what was happening at the time for fashion. And I would say the other area that we saw around that time were, were some of the you know denim aficionados, including Adriano Goldschmidt, were talking about how multifiber blends could you know be the next step and to look at more environmentally responsible options. And he, Adriano, who we've worked with for years, was calling out tensile ISL specifically. So these were some of the When we look back now, um, these were some of the things that were happening uh, to really change 
And now our tensile lyocell, we work with 125 denim mills around the world. And we have major programs with, ranging from brands like Levi's, American Eagle, Gap, um, to even many of the premium brands, if it's Boyish, Triarchy, um, uh, Frame, um, Closed Denim in Europe, wonderful mm -hmm. German partner uh, that we have. Great. Yeah, so we've, we've really grown so much. And I think Tencel Lyocell is beyond just one definition. It's not just about being a soft fiber. Um, and I think as people were looking at ways to reduce the environmental impact, and I'm trying to stay away from the word sustainable there, particularly the overused word. Um, but that's where, you know, these, these more authentic looks uh, in how you could utilize. And in fact, we just did this amazing capsule collection with Mosin um, from Endrime. That collection showed how you could take vintage looks and interpret them with fabrics with tensile lyocell or with refibra. And do you have that? Um, do you have that collection already released? Uh, we we have the collection. Uh, a lot of it is online on our Carved and Blue blog. People can see it there. And actually, one of the pieces from that hardware collection is in um, the museum in Bali opened with a denim um, exhibit. It would be lovely. Yeah, anything Moss yeah. in terms of hands to is, is incredible. Can, yes. we just, can we just cycle back a little bit to basics here? Um, what, so tensile's mixed with the cotton at, at a certain percentage, and you said that after a certain percentage, you do notice differences. But aside from that overuse sustainability word that we were talking about earlier, what other properties does tensile bring to, so not even denim, but any fabric? So for tensile, um, the, some of the other attributes that it brings, so certainly the softness that I think people attribute the most with tensile lyocell, and that enhances the blends with cotton or with other multi-fiber blends. There's also, uh, because tensile is a hydrophilic fiber, so it can take in moisture. And so then that moisture isn't staying next to your skin. It provides another level of comfort, being a very breathable fiber. Um, and we all know, you know, changing temperatures and, it, you know, in and out, you want to feel that even as you're getting hot, that you're not feeling like you're, the, the clothes that you're wearing are adding to that. So we, we say it can give you some regulation on temperature um, because it does take in the moisture and it evaporates easily. It's also not creating an area in which bacteria can readily grow. So we can't say it's antibacterial, but it's not growing at a rate. And this all has to do with the fact that it, it does take in the moisture. And additionally, when consumers are done with their garments, now there's more consideration for what happens to garments when, when, they're, when they're done using them. And so tensile lyocell is biodegradable and compostable. And I think these are some of the attributes that people are starting to think about more. And then you've taken this, this tensile lyocell to another level with the refibra. Can you, can you walk us through that process a little bit in detail? Yeah, sure. So with refibra, um, I know it's harder to see this, but um, so what we're doing is we're taking the, the cotton waste. So we're using uh, post-industrial and post-consumer cotton waste. We make that into a pulp. So it's, it's back to making, we, we take the cellulose from the cotton in order to make it into a pulp. And then we take our wood pulp and we blend those two pulps together. So we have 70% from wood and 30% from upcycled cotton waste. That's what we're working on now. Then what we do is we add the solvent uh, to make it into that you know, honey type consistency. In the solvent, we add the fiber identification. So again, we, can, we have the transparency to know that it actually is refiber technology. And then we extrude, you know, the fiber. And so really the fiber is just like the original tensile lyocell. It's just as soft, just as strong, but now we've added the circularity in. And so we launched this in 2017. We now have worked with more than 25 retailers and brands with a variety of different programs. Some of them have had repeated programs. Um, actually closed Kings of Indigo. These are some of the brands in Europe that have used Refibra. 
Um, also, Levi's has had continual programs since the launch. Um, and so Reviewer Technology is a way that we can be responsible and think about the next generation of what's happening with our waste. Right now, I mentioned we're at 30%. It's a mix of post-industrial and post-consumer waste. Our goal is to get to 50% post-consumer by 2024. So we want to continue to add more waste. And we've had such an amazing response from the denim mills. They're extremely innovative. I mean, some of our mill partners like Candiani in Italy, who I know you, um, you know, Alberto and Simon, they've just done a fabulous job with what they call their regen collection. And here um, they're mixing mechanical recycled cotton. So they're taking their mill waste and making that into yarn. And they're taking our refibra. And what, what happens is when you're mechanically recycling cotton, you're shredding it up and the staples can sometimes be shorter. Well, they always are shorter. And what we do then is when, when Candiani blends it with our refibra, our refibra staples are longer. So when you mix the shorter staples and the longer staples, then you actually can increase the amount of recycled cotton, mechanically recycled cotton waste in the blend. So it's amazing because uh, Alberto came up with this fabric regen. He started it in 2018 and he could blend um, the mechanically recycled cotton with our refibra. And he said then that he's using no new cotton to make this authentic vintage looking denim. And this was really something very different um, and then in 2019, um, Alberto won the Innovation Award at ITMA, which is the innovation um, uh, for uh, machinery uh, companies. And so from that, we continue to see a lot of innovation around Refibra. Um, many of the mills also in Pakistan and Turkey, um, also in Spain, have come up with amazing blends um, and you know, this I think is something that the market will continue to demand. We're seeing more retailers and brands come up with circularity initiatives and making statements um, because we realize there's 50 million tons of textile and apparel waste every year that's discarded. I mean, you, I, you know, how do you even think about how much that is? Can't contemplate it, can you? And so now there's a lot of initiatives within the industry. Um, and, you know, there's not one way to do it. But I feel like as an industry, we're going to have to come up with scalable solutions. And for lensing, you know, we started this. We were very early in the game to start this. Mm -hmm. um, in 2017, I feel like I was explaining circularity first. I had to educate about that before we could start to talk about the fiber, uh, how refiber technology is. And um, so for, for lensing, we continue to have programs, continue to evolve what we're working on um, and continue to scale with our partners and figure out how does the consumer come into this? Because we're reaching a point where it's never going to be only trees, but that the consumer becomes our raw material supplier, basically. Mm -hmm totally different way of working but a very very interesting way in taking things forward it's funny you mentioned that um that denim from candiani i i was down in 2018 for their open mills and they gave us um like a couple of rolls of the fabric i think i came home with six meters and i sent it up when i when i restarted the vlog again um a few months ago i sent it up to a friend of mine in russia he's a denim designer and he's going to be doing something with it oh great oh so, good I'm super curious how that's going to turn out. And that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's um, it's this refibra technology. It's also their indigo juice technology as well. So yes. I'm fascinated with what Igor is going to be able to do with it. Yeah, amazing. I mean, Alberto approaches innovation like a kitchen, you know, like let's throw a little bit of this in and a little bit of that and what comes up. And that's truly the innovation that we see coming out of the denim industry. Um, and what I love is that when we come up with a new idea, put it in the market, the market comes up with other ideas that we never even thought of. Mm. You know, it was not something that we thought of, of saying, well, you know, how could, how could there be a denim that uses no new cotton? That wasn't our intention. Um, our intention was to come up with a fiber that was still high quality 
Um, you know, because when we look at circularity, you have to look at the materials that you're developing still provide a quality garment that's not going to have any, you know, less of a life than an original. You know, there, there would be no sense to make uh, a quality fiber that is less uh, and couldn't withstand all of the denim processing that's required or becomes just more of this fast fashion pace um, and low, low quality that just winds up being discarded again, right? I mean, that brings us nicely onto, onto the, like, I think second and final question. You seem, um, like Lensing as a company seems very focused on, um, on developing the sustainable, sustainability development goals. And that's the sort of 17 points uh, mandate that's going forward. I mean, it would definitely, I don't have to go through all 17, but maybe there's one or two at, that you particularly have got like a, a focus on or an interest on. Um, maybe you could tell us something about that because I think that's fascinating along with it as well. Yeah, actually we've even done, um, we have one, one uh, information sheet that highlights what we're doing for every single goal. And it's amazing what, you know, when you use this, the sustainable development goals came out in 2015 um, from the United Nations and they were the, the framework that's needed for all companies, not just in our industry, towards 2030. Of course, we've really started off with a, with a bang with the pandemic, but um, you know, what change needs to happen in the world and looking at not just from an environmental side, but also the social side. And that's where I think the SDGs make it very simple for all companies because otherwise it's overwhelming. Where do you even begin? Mm -hmm. And that's where you said, you know, for lensing and what we're doing in denim, I would say first we look at SDG 12, which is responsible consumption and production. That would be taking in our you know, what we do around tensile lyocell, cell, the closed loop meaning that we have there, mm -hmm. able to have circularity. And, you know, we do a lot also to educate at the consumer level about what kind of materials are being used. We did a um, consumer campaign through tencel.com our, um, and our social media uh, that runs on, under the Tencel brand name just to raise awareness to consumers to read what their garments are made of. And we had more than 80 million impressions of, for this campaign. So I think it's, it's important that even though we only manufacture fiber, we're being responsible to educate around what the differences are. That's SDG 12. I would also like to highlight then SDG 13, which is climate action. And Lensing last month during New York Climate Week launched a new fiber called Tencel Lysol and Tencel Mo True Carbon Zero. True Carbon Zero is produced in Austria, and this is where we use the renewable energy. Um, in manufacturing our pulp and our fiber at our plant in Lensing, Austria. And this is actually very different because we can lower our carbon footprint in a very responsible way. Um, additionally, for True Carbon Zero, we engage with our suppliers on what they can do to reduce their carbon footprint. And then the third aspect of True Carbon Zero is offsets. So climate action, very big for Lensing. We are one of a thousand companies that have science-based targets. We are the only fiber company with approved science-based targets. And so this is you know, just another aspect that the industry has to tackle is what's our carbon footprint. Um, so that's SDG 13. And then my favorite is always SDG 17, uh, which is partnerships for the goals. And in what I work on, we do a lot around collaborations um, and I think that's the only way forward to support. And even though I'm at the very beginning from a raw material stage, we're working with brands and how it all has to connect together. Partnerships are key. And especially in the denim industry here, we see, you know, the value of partnerships because of everything that goes into manufacturing a gene, whether it's the uh, laundry processing and working with partners like Genealogia or all of our mill partners in the world. So those are, those are my, the three I would like to highlight, SDG 12, 13, and 17.
I mean, as a final question, I always like to just throw this one out there because um, I think it's important that, that any company has a chance to, to highlight something they're particularly uh, proud of or something we haven't covered here. So is there anything that you feel that is, is fundamental to lensing that we've not talked about today? Anything that's fundamental to lensing? Um, well, maybe just fundamental to denim. Um, I'd like to highlight what we do with Carved in Blue and how we bring the denim community together with our blog platform. Um, Carved in Blue, we launched, uh, it's almost five years now. And this is where we have our stories about what we see going on in denim, um, highlighting the people, the, the mill partners, the retailers and brands, and you know, hi, keep up to date and highlight uh, what we see as being important and give a voice to the denim industry from our lens. Um, and with that, it's been amazing this year as we've been in lockdown um, to have the opportunity to use this platform to continue to connect. And we've been doing that through videos, webinars, Instagram Live, we also have a video channel of all denim videos. Um, I kind of like to refer to it as, you know, anything you, you want to watch around denim, you can just go to Blue Lens. That's our YouTube channel. And it's not only stories just about lensing, but we include our mill and brand partners and just things that we think are interesting going on. Um, so I would say that's, that's one area to highlight around what we're doing. And we, we welcome feedback um, and uh, interest in more stories. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of the blog, like really. Um, I found, I discovered that a few months ago and you're doing a super yep. good job and you just got the reward, award, right? Yes, we just received the Content Marketing Institute Award for Best Content Specific Blog. I'm very happy uh, that we were able to be recognized beyond just the denim industry for what we're doing. And um, it's interesting because when we started the project, I, none of us really thought it would evolve to, to where it has today. And I think, you know, we were able to establish it at a great time. Um, and it really came out of the fact of my colleague, Michael Kinemont, um, you know, we were sitting down saying, there's all these great stories. We don't want to forget them. We don't want to lose them. All the interesting people and the heritage that we were establishing within the denim market. And that launched, um, you know, how putting together Carved in Blue. And it's interesting because some colleagues were like, oh, you're never gonna have enough stories, three stories a week, that's too much. But really, we, we actually have more stories than we have time to tell. Um, and we try to be selective in that. But um, and then during the pandemic, it's been really something that I um, treasure during this time is having the chance to have these conversations with our denim colleagues. We put together a series we call the Denim Think Tank um, because everything's changing now. And we thought, you know, this is really our time to document too what's happening in the denim industry and the shift, this evolution of change. Good. So it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for following. <laughs> not at all, not at all. It's it's a really fantastic resource and for sure. Um, yeah, for everybody who's watching, I'm going to put a link to that down below. Right, um, I think that's 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 great. We've covered a lot today. Um, thank you so much for your time. I, I really, I, I do appreciate it for sure. And it's been a fascinating journey yeah. to where denim is going, where the, where the denim industry is going, where the fabric industry is going as well. So uh, I, I really, I super appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, we see this history of our past, where we're currently at, and we're you know looking ahead towards the future, and really appreciate everything that you're doing too in bringing the heritage of denim into the future. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I will say I will say good afternoon just now or good morning in your case, and yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, as I said at the beginning of the video, this has been a little bit of a longer one. And uh, for those of you guys still there, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm super curious, like, what is your, what, what, what are your takeaways from, from the whole conversation? Has it also, I mean, for the raw denim guys out there, certainly, has it shifted your perceptions on what makes a sustainable pair of jeans? Would you consider having a pair of jeans with a certain percentage of tensile in there? Have you already had experiences with, with any kind of fabric using tensile? 
Uh, let me know down in the comments. Um, yeah, I'm going to be hanging out down there after I post this video, so it'd be really good to get a conversation going. Uh, down below in the description, as always, there's going to be links to our social media and all the other good stuff. You can stay in touch through that. In fact, if you want to get in touch, um, if you've got any questions, one of the best ways to do it actually is just to DM me through Instagram. That's also a really good way to get in touch. Um, yeah, guys, I, d I don't know how things are with you, but uh, just today, actually, Germany went into another hard lockdown, which, yeah, I, I think that's, to be honest, I think it's, it's well beyond time. And I certainly hope it's going to flatten out the curve. We're going to see the numbers dropping. But anyway, where, wherever you are in the world, I, I hope you're happy and healthy. It's coming up to Christmas, so I hope you can get home to see your families and your families are all healthy and safe. And guys, please, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I'm going to see you in the next vlog. Oh, I've forgotten this in the last two videos. Why am I wearing my ring there? I've forgotten this in the last two videos. Guys, it'd be awesome if you've enjoyed this video, if you could consider subscribing. If you've enjoyed this and you want to know when I'm dropping another video, there's also the bell notification icon, then you're going to get notified whenever I do drop a video. And yeah, same as I said before, I hope everybody's happy and healthy out there. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other. And this time, I will definitely see you in the next vlog.